Good morning, everyone. And it's my pleasure to introduce Pat Wallace this morning, who grew up in Ozone Park, where she attended Our Lady of Wisdom Academy and first met the Daughters of Wisdom, who've had a lasting impact, she says, on her life. She taught junior and senior high school English for 33 years in the Sawanica High School District. She moved to Wantaw on Long Island in 1993, where she enjoys its proximity to a number of state parks. And since her retirement from teaching in 2001, Pat has been a member of the Daughters of Wisdom Auxiliary Council, a fundraising arm for the Daughters of Wisdom. And from 2003 to 2022, Pat has been a part of the OWA Alumni Committee, which planned its annual luncheon, the proceeds of which were donated to the DW Retirement Fund. In 2008, Pat became an Associate of Wisdom and has served two terms on the coordinating team, one of which is co-director. Pat's also a part of Fire in Our Hearts core team, which prepares weekly reflections posted on the internet. Her newest volunteer work is at Wantua's Last Hope Rescue and Rehab Center, taking care of cats on a weekly basis. And in her spare time, Pat enjoys reading crossword puzzles and traveling, especially to national parks out west and for caring for her three cats. It's my pleasure to introduce you, Pat, this morning for our conversation. Thank you, Ann, and good morning, everybody. My topic today is Native American spirituality. I can still see him, this Native American, sitting on top of a huge boulder and chanting, his eyes lifted toward the purple majesty of the surrounding Colorado Rockies. I can still hear the hushed conversations on the grounds of what is presently a conference center in Albuquerque, New Mexico, but once was sacred tribal lands and burial grounds. I can still picture driving high upon a ridge in Yellowstone National Park, looking down and seeing countless herds of buffalo roaming the lush Lamar Valley, the same valley where a rare white buffalo calf was born this past June. To the indigenous people who revere the American bison or buffalo, the sacred calf's appearance was not only a blessing and a sign of hope, but also a dire warning that our earth is at a crossroads and that humanity will be cursed if we don't live in harmony with our planet and the natural world. A story is told that about a thousand years ago, white buffalo calf woman, a sacred figure in Native American culture, came to the ancestors of the Lakota and gave them a sacred pipe and a round rock. Black Elk, a medicine man, remarked that, quote, the rock is the earth, your grandmother and mother, and it is where you will live and increase. All of this is sacred, so do not forget. Every dawn as it comes is a holy event. Every day is holy, for the light comes from your father, the great spirit. You must always remember that the two-leggeds and all other peoples who stand upon this earth are sacred and should be treated as such. In this story, we see not only the awareness of connections on our living planet, but also the holiness of events that so many take for granted. The dawn, the day, light, time, and so on. In relation to all these gifts, human beings are also expected to be humble and to respect all creatures. But what exactly does Native American spirituality entail? Native American languages do not have a term for religion, per se. Indigenous spirituality, for virtually all tribes, views life as a journey, with no separation between the spiritual 
and the natural world. Life is that all important passage with everything, all experiences, not viewed separately, but as part of the whole journey towards maintaining balance and equality with the universe. Indigenous spirituality then is a way of life, a way of knowing, centered on a relationship with the creator, the land and life in all of its diverse forms. Steeped in animism, the Native American people attribute souls to plants, inanimate objects, and natural phenomena, and therefore worship many gods. Most, perhaps all Native Americans, see the entire universe as being alive. The belief structure of Native Americans usually centers on a central, primary, all-knowing, all-powerful creator, the Great Spirit, who was served by a multitude of gods or spirits. There is typically a counterpart to God, an evil presence who deals out disaster, suffering, and death. Native American beliefs are passed down orally from generation to generation, and their traditions and ceremonies center around life cycle events, such as birth, adulthood, marriage, death, and so forth. However, the central basic tenet of Native American spirituality is recognizing that humans who are equal to everything else created must seek to maintain balance and harmony by living according to the teachings and commands handed down by their ancestors from the creator. All persons, places, things have a role in maintaining the all important harmony and balance. Native American spirituality, then, is a reflection of a simple, humble way of life, a life connected and bound to Mother Earth, to the natural world, a life of learning from and about the Great Spirit, about God, wisdom, the artisan, as we read in Wisdom 7. Simply, I learned about wisdom, the design of the universe, the force of its elements, beginning and end of time, changes in the sun's course, variations of seasons, cycles of years, positions of stars, natures of animals, tempers of beasts, powers of winds, thoughts of humanity, uses of plants, virtues of roots. Such things as are hidden, I learned. For wisdom, the artisan of all, taught me. In his encyclical, Laudate Deum, Pope Francis also talks about this connectedness that has been an integral part of Native American culture. And I quote, everything and everyone is connected, he says. We are part of nature, included in it, and thus in constant interaction with it. And therefore we do not look at the world from without, but from within. A healthy ecology is the result of interaction between human beings and the environment as occurs in the indigenous cultures. In the sacred universe, scholar and cultural historian Thomas Berry reminds us, though the Native Americans knew this long before, that, quote, the divine communicates to us through the language of the natural world. But today, we are talking only to ourselves. We are not talking to rivers. We are not listening to the wind and the stars. We have broken the great conversation. And by breaking that conversation, we have shattered the universe. Finally, I would like to end by reading a segment from the prologue to a book called The Church of the Wild by Victoria Lures, a Native American. It sums up not only many indigenous spiritual beliefs, but also the precarious state of our world, a world, sad to say, that is losing its connection to the one that God so loved. Once upon a time, all humans knew their lives, their food, their sense of meaning and kinship with God or the gods was connected with their relations, the hawks and the soil, 
and ferns and mosquitoes. Like all other wild creatures, they belonged to the land and they knew it. Their ancestors knew this and reminded one another around their fires that they belonged to a great web of life. But there came a time when some of the people could no longer hear the conversation. The wax in their ears became hardened and their hearts pretended that they were happier controlling the world than loving it. They rushed right past the burning bushes on the way to importance, missing the message of the doe hiding in plain sight with her newborn fawn. They packed the bodies of sacred forest cathedrals onto trucks and shipped them to mills. They forgot that the songs of the thrush spelled out mornings and wisdom and octaves. Disconnected little by little, their voices went missing in the symphony of aliveness. The songs of the wild god cascading through the trees no longer guided their lives. And a deep loneliness sunk down upon the people like a heavy fog nobody could see. The time has come to lift that veil of fog and return to the intimate relationship with the living world. More and more of us are taking our place, once again, as full participants in the web of life, which we remember is held together by love. You simply have to know how to listen because the holy is in your place too. I'll leave some time for thought and reflection and leave you with a couple of questions to think about if you so choose. The subtitle of the book that I just read from is How Nature Invites Us Into the Sacred, something the indigenous people have always known. When has nature invited you into the sacred? When has wisdom, the artisan, shown you the deep connection between Mother Earth and all of God's creation. <laughs>